So by popular request, today we continue our conversations on relationships and more specifically, creating ideal relationships, going straight to the cause of relationship phenomena, the metaphysical, giving life through imagination and from there, allowing the relationships to show up accordingly, all arising naturally as a reflection of our mental state without force in all naturalness. I released a video on Tuesday, which I titled, Be Still and Know That Imagination Is Reality. This is the key. It starts with this, like all creation, imagination. So when it comes to relationships, we may have allowed ourselves to believe that our relationships have to be a certain way, which is a result of looking around and seeing how others are relating with each other, and from there, forming beliefs of how our own relationships are to be. Or it could be based on personal experiences, and then from there, forming beliefs that are helpful for future relationships or not helpful for future relationships based on these personal experiences. Sometimes we make up these beliefs, or we may, again, look around and see how others are relating with each other in these kinds of experiences, and from there, form beliefs of how our own relationships are to be. So again, this can be a mix of helpful or limiting, which the limiting ones subconsciously restrict us from having the kind of relationships we truly desire from our heart. And I found in my life, and speaking with many, that these restrictive beliefs are usually lack of self-acceptance based. And so that's what I'd like to focus on today. Now, when it comes to borrowing beliefs from others, let's release identification to that meta-belief, which is a belief about beliefs, that others know better than you of how relationships are to be. And we do this by questioning this belief. Again, nothing wrong with being inspired by others, if it's helpful, what I'd like to encourage more of is discovering your own way so you can have the kind of relationships that you want, ideal ones, whatever you consider to be ideal. So the question, where did they get these beliefs from? Perhaps they were inspired and they imagined it to a certain degree, or perhaps they too have allowed themselves to believe that relationships work a certain way as a result of looking around and seeing how others are relating, and thus they form beliefs, which again may be restrictive to how they truly desire from their own heart relationships to be. Now I encourage you to go within yourself and discover how you would like your relationships to be, the true and authentic way the desires from the heart. Because I believe that if the desire exists, then it exists mutually with another. If not, we would never have the kind of relationships that we truly desire in our heart, and that doesn't make any sense to me. So now that we freed ourselves from identifying with unhelpful relationship beliefs, let's for a moment imagine experiencing your ideal relationship in imagination. Whatever it looks like for you, whatever kind of experience, give it to yourself in imagination and feel the reality of it, like that's the way it is. This imaginal act impresses the subconscious mind, and you'll see, people start to show up who match what you are imagining. This has never been known to fail for me. I've seen this happen again and again throughout my life. And so now I trust this simple process exclusively, which is really a form of self-acceptance. Accepting that you were not created as a joke of the Creator to desire something from your heart and not receive it. Imagine and accept. That's the way it is. And we don't need to talk about what we're imagining with anyone. I personally don't believe that there's any real need in doing so. Because it is what is 
done inside that causes the outer changes. The subconscious mind takes care of everything for you. The outer is a reflection of how we imagine relationships to be. If we doubt and talk about what we imagine as an ideal relationship with others, they may reflect our own doubts, which is fine. You can look beyond it. If you don't want that experience, do the imaginal act in silence and move on. Because what is done in the silence is heard. And why does this work? Well, because who really defines what an ideal, mutually harmonious relationship is. You do. You are the only suggester and suggestee, the conscious and the subconscious. And now, from this day forth, you consciously suggest to yourself how you would like your relationships to be, and they happen that way. This entire journey of life appears as a self-reflection journey, like a hero's journey, which is a story of becoming who you were destined to be, which is really who you desire to be. So there's no conflict in mind unless we subconsciously identify with conflicting beliefs in mind. And how so? Well, let's explore further how relationships like other areas of our life reflect as relationships of our inward journey. First, let's emphasize this important overarching point. The self-realization and self-actualization journey is about accepting yourself, which is awareness and you are that. And the desires of your heart, which you consciously give form to in imagination and the degree of this self-acceptance or lack of degree of this self-acceptance is what plays out as the relationship theater in our lives. Also, it's important to note, as it has been my experience, imaginal scenes may flash upon the mind's eye, seemingly random, giving form to the relationship you desire in imagination divine visions of the relationship to come. So in summary, relationships vividly reflect your degree of self-acceptance. So acknowledge that you already are complete inside. You have everything inside now. This is the ideal premise I suggest operating from when it comes to relationships. Now let's talk about the journey. So when I look back at all my relationships since I was a teenager. This could be friendships, romantic, professional. They all seem to have a common thread. They were all reflective of where I was at that time. They were teachers. I always say the teacher and student are one. They were revealing what I was believing about myself, them, and how we relate with each other. And as I changed inside, the relationships would change outside. Now, I didn't know this in the earlier stages. I simply wanted to have certain kinds of relationships, and they happened. But they seemed to come with all these other aspects that I did not consciously want. These were past subconscious beliefs playing out as the undesirable theater in relationships, in various shapes and forms. So somewhere along the journey, I realized that this is how it is. And at times, I didn't accept that this is what was really going on. That was more like a half-stepping acceptance. Yet the degree of self-responsibility seemed to increase more so each day as I would connect the dots effect to the cause within. So now when I speak with others about relationships, I say simply accept that there are others out there that want the same things. Don't settle. Go for what you want, as it seems to complement where you are now. And also, if there's conflict in relationships, 
Go within and clear it up. The relationship will change to reflect the inner change. And if you want to continue being together, then great. If you clear it up within and you no longer want to be together, then great. Because either way, it will be authentic. And let's say you choose to move on from the relationship. The next relationship will show up to continue reflecting these ideal attributes. So going about relationships this way does a few things that I found. And these are my experiences, my beliefs, not meant to suggest that this is the only way. Number one, relationships are to be experienced beyond control. So trying to manipulate another person could be a sign of insecurity and lack of self-acceptance. Our goal is to simply accept ourselves more so each day, acknowledging that we already are our ideal now. You have everything now. You are complete inside now. And others show up to play out the degree of self-acceptance and then the relationships are experienced more like a supportive and rewarding experience. And when you do something for another, you do it because you want to. No manipulation. Because no one to change but self. Number two, the student and teacher are one. So if we observe without identifying with anything that shows up emotionally or thought-based related to inharmonious past beliefs in mind, revealed in the moment, we are about to react and release identification to it in the moment, or if we note it and through self-talk or auto-suggestion later, we change how we relate to the person and relate from the premise of how we would like it to be, we will notice the relationship changes or remains harmonious. That's because we create our own reality. So accept full responsibility. And even in the more challenging relationships, once the change had occurred within me, the undesirable experience no longer appeared. If I still wanted to be with them, they appear to have changed. If I no longer wanted to be with them, in the next relationship, that undesirable aspect did not happen. The change had occurred first within, which reflected in relationships in some shape or form. And these are a few things to keep into consideration. We can certainly discuss more in the upcoming videos. However, I feel that these are powerful and plenty for experiencing ideal relationships. And now, we talked a bit about within relationships, during relationships. Let's talk about attracting ideal relationships. So again, like within relationships, all attraction and chemistry arises naturally as a reflection of an ideal mental state of being. Notice how, and I'll reflect back in my life as well. When I felt ideal inside, I would attract accordingly. If I did not, it felt like I was chasing and trying to get, which is a reflection of operating from beliefs of lack of self-acceptance. For example, I remember a while back being interested in certain women, and they would say they were not attracted to me. I then realized that I was imagining that they were too good for me, or something like that. And then when I accepted, I am already ideal now, they started to reach out, and they wanted to date. And back then, I didn't know what was going on to this degree. And if I asked them why, they would often point to visible causes, or they seem to be causes, visible causes, such as the way you act now, your mannerisms, chemistry is different than before. And these are not the causes. These are effects from the cause. And so what exactly is the cause? Well, let's explore some of my notes here from William Walker Atkinson from his book, Mental Fascination. He says, The theories of suggestion are not contrary to those of 
mentative energy and induction when properly understood. The facts of the suggestionists are undoubted, but they make the mistake of ignoring the mental states of the suggestionists. They think that their effects are produced by suggestion alone, and we can see this as outer effects, and forgetting the mental state behind the suggestion, which is the real motive force. If their theories be true, why is it that two individuals using the same words upon the same subject produce varying degrees of effect? It is because the mental states or dynamic mentation of the two vary in quality and degree. The suggestionist thinks that they are merely directing their suggestion by words, etc., toward the subject. But all the time, they are pouring out a current of mentative energy which rapidly induces the desired mental state in the subject. The best suggestionists are those who have acquired the, and he quotes, suggestive manner. Authoritative utterances, physical appearance, manner and tones arising, and here's the key, arising from a reflection of the mental state within. Now let's look at this mentative energy quote here, and then we'll relate it all to our conversation. He says, I've explained the theory and principle underlying mental fascination in my larger book, The Secret of Mental Magic, of which this little manual is a sidelight. In that book, I have explained that the underlying force beneath all forms of mental magic and mental fascination is the universal mentative energy of which and in which each individual mind is a center of activity. I have also explained that the mentative energy of each individual mind is and may be transmitted from one person to another by means of mentative currents or waves, and that these mentative currents and waves tend to induce in the minds of others the emotions or feelings existing in the mental states sending out the waves or currents. As I mentioned many times, body moves, emotions move, everything moves as a authentic reflection of a mental state. So mentative energy, attraction energy, chemistry, and related seemingly invisible phenomena arise naturally from the individual's mental state which is made up of beliefs. And that's what a state is, a body of beliefs. So you can change the state or specific beliefs. It's really up to you. I do both as I don't see one way better or the other. As there are infinite states, thus infinite combination of beliefs, which may be grouped together in various states, as all states exist and are accessible now. So you can, if you'd like, go specific to the experience for exact precision effects like a laser. Everything in relationships can be changed to be exactly like how you desire it to be. The change is initiated inside and it reflects outside. So let your world be outside and change your world inside. You have all the power. So in the example earlier, the women I was interested in we're pointing to the visible effects, which is perfect. They're messengers. We track it back to the cause inside. We assume the responsibility. The cause is within. So here are some beliefs that I incorporated that change the effects. Remember, it has nothing to do with them or the world. We let it be. Others reflect. We don't try to convince them. We change it inside 
and observe the reflections as the changes outside, as the relationships play out accordingly. So three beliefs incorporated with autosuggestion that changed everything were, I prioritize how I feel inside. I accept myself fully the way I am now. I instantly accept the past and move forward accordingly, guided by the direction of my heart's desire. So you can create whatever auto-suggestions you want in relationships and accept them, and they play out. Use your imagination to have the relationships that you want. So again, chemistry, mentative energy, all those subtle and seemingly invisible effects happen naturally. I don't focus on them. As he says here, the suggestionist thinks that they are merely directing their suggestion by words toward the subject, but all the time they are pouring out a current of mentative energy which rapidly induces the desired mental state in the subject. So again, the experience flows. There's no trying to convince. We let the world be not trying out here to appear suggestive. It is a natural expression. And then we experience our relationships accordingly, like a flowing dance. It's all in your mind. So when he says the best suggestionists are those who have acquired the suggestive manner, and he puts it in quotes, if you study William Walker Atkinson, he's very nuanced, super nuanced. He loves words. He was also a successful attorney prior to writing his many books, which we see incorporated into his writing style. So the best suggestionists, or we could say those that are experienced as attractive or suggestionists, are not trying to suggest nor attract. It happens automatically, naturally. So we could categorize them in this world as suggestionist or attractive or whatever. This is what William Walker Atkinson is indicating. From there, the utterances, appearance, manner, and tones flow automatically to reflect that mental state. So this is a way of being inside first. Because as we remain in this ideal mental state, we not only attract the ideal relationships, but through our own congruence, we physically experience them fully. The quality of our relationships remain, and the effects like chemistry, mentative energy, manners, tones, appearances, what we say, what we don't say, seem to be even more vividly experienced and harmoniously related with others in a mutually beneficial relationship theater not trying to be exaggerated, desperate, manipulative, or forceful, but rather a natural and authentic arising of how you imagine it to be. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I realize that relationships are mirror reflections of the degree of my self-acceptance. And I allow myself to imagine exactly what I desire, and it shows up in relationships as mutual harmony and love. Through this authentic way of being, others show up to reflect my self-acceptance, which also reflects as accepting them, as they mirror my ideal relationship in all vivid accuracy as flow-based ideal loving relationships experienced as vivid desirable theater. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.